get into our top five busts. Now, to clarify, these are not players that are going to have a disaster season, be bad. This is a bust at cost. We yes. don't like them at the price they were going at. They are expected to potentially underperform where you're spending to get them. And the other thing we should clarify here is that these busts, and not that I disagree or agree, but these busts are Jay and Connor's busts. So if you're watching this show and you're like, well, I disagree with that, at uh, Croucher JD, at Connor J. Rogers, like, because I'm doing love hate tomorrow. Like, I don't need, like, which is in essence, you know, a sleepers and bust column, right? Pretty you much. know, it's packaged more, a little differently. Packaged a little bit differently. It's also about ADP, love hate is. But in essence, I, I didn't want to, you know, basically steal my own thunder, as it were, uh, my thunder from down under. But, uh, which is you as well, Jay. I would uh, get that reference. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, as a Jay, man from down under. Yeah, as well, Jay, as well, you should, Jay Gunn. I so these sleepers and busts, uh, Connor and Jay put their uh, collective heads together. I'm sure they were on the text stream that I'm not a part of. They went back and forth, and they came up with their top five busts for the season, top five sleepers, which we'll get to. Again, this is all based on Yahoo ADP. Our board of directors had a meeting last night without you <laughs> to come up with. Of course, these. Mm, of so. course. We'll start with Josh Jacobs, right? Now, this isn't an order. Josh Jacobs isn't projected to be the biggest bust. This is just a mm. collection of players. Josh Jacobs right now on Yahoo, ADP around 28, which would be RB12. Now, Matthew, you have him ranked 47th overall. The RB ranking pretty close at yeah. RB13, but obviously the overall ranking compared to where he's going, that's a pretty significant difference with, of 19 spots. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just about draft philosophy in terms of where you're going earlier in the draft. And so, you know, I, I've... I've created my overall ranks in terms of where, you know, what I prioritize. And it's obviously the first round has a lot of wide receivers and because I think you can get running backs later. On Yahoo, that is not the case and certainly not with Josh Jacobs. Again, I am at 47 overall. I like Josh Jacobs this year. I think he gets a ton of volume. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not reaching two rounds to get him, which based on my ranks and based on Yahoo's ADP, I would have to do. The biggest I mean, problem is he was just bad last year. He was bad. Yeah. Um, and I know he was amazing the year before and he won the rushing title, but he is someone who has taken uh, a lot of hits over the journey, a lot of wear and tear. He's dealt with injury issues. Now he's playing in a better offense, uh, arguably a better offensive line. He should be in scoring position more often, but Packers last year, they didn't run the ball in the red zone. And Lafleur historically has liked to use multiple running backs. Yeah, and I think the biggest issue here is, guys, he's going ahead of Drake London, Nico Collins, Debo Samuel and Cooper Cup, depending on how you feel about those guys that have their own injury questions. But once again, the cost to get a Josh Jacobs yeah. right now is Give me very all those guys. Give me all those guys I, over I Jacobs. Again, the, the argument for Jacobs, and we like Jacobs, friend, friend of the podcast, Josh Jacobs, we, we like Jacobs. But the the challenge here to your guys' point is that, you know, will he catch passes, right? I mean, this is somebody that, you know, that's been a big part of his game, right? He's he's gotten like, you know, fifty targets the last couple of, you know, last couple of years. So he, he he gets he he um he, he's used in the passing game. Will that happen? Because there's a lot of mouths to feed in Green Bay. And to your point, like, do we see, does, you know, used to drive me crazy, right, with free Aaron Jones. But the fact is, is that even when A.J. Dillon was just, like, running through mud, they would still give him too much work. And now Marshawn Lloyd, now he's dealt with a little bit of injury. But I know you like Marshawn Lloyd I coming do. out of college. He was also injured in college. Yes, so you great. just start to wonder, like, this is now trickling into summer of the NFL. But the talent is phenomenal with Marshawn right. Lloyd. So if Marshawn Lloyd can get on the field, does he, does he eat into what Jacobs is doing? Because without insane volume, then you need to – then you're hoping for efficiency. Again, he's my running back 13. I like Jacobs this year. I actually think Green Bay is going to kind of run him into the ground if you look closely at that contract. The guaranteed money is only for this season. So if they want to, if they think Marshawn Lloyd's the future, they can just be like, we're just going to, you know, uh, whatever. Cut give give, give, give Jacobs 300 touches and not worry about next year. Uh, but, yes, I think in terms of the overall ADP at Yahoo, I, I'm with you guys here. It's just it's, – it's too rich. He's, he shouldn't be going as a top 30 overall player. I'm as barely as a top 50 overall player because – Again, there's better wide receivers out there. Our next one here, Jay, Michael Pittman, which might surprise some people, right? An ADP right now on Yahoo of 44, a little around there. Barry has him as the 38th overall player. Wide receiver 24, though, compared to on Yahoo. He's going as wide receiver 21. And Pittman, you have to like the floor. 
but I don't know if he possesses the same upside as some of the guys that are going after him, like Malik Neighbors, Devontae Smith. Now, I would take Pittman over Stephon Diggs. I know that's going to yep. be a popular name over there, but he is going ahead of him as well. Yeah, I think the thing with Pittman is that historically, you've just been able to pencil this guy in to finish as between the 12th and the 23rd best wide receiver in fantasy. But a couple things. One, he doesn't catch, he doesn't catch touchdowns. Right. He never catches yeah. touchdowns. He has one season in his career with more than four touchdowns. And then the other thing too is that didn't have a great rapport with Anthony Richardson. Now, I can't read too much into that because Richardson played so sparingly, but his production last year came with Gardner Minshew. And also, as excited as we are about Anthony Richardson and the upside, Richardson might be the highest variance quarterback in the entire league. Like, you could go south there. And like yesterday, the reports out of the joint practice with the Bengals were atrocious. Like, the Colts were yeah, so Richardson bad. Richardson had a bad practice. The Colts were so bad that the Bengals were upset that they weren't getting a proper, like, offense to yeah, go. He had a great summer, by the way. Yeah. He's, the training camp overall has been very positive, but to your yeah. point, yeah, I, I saw the reports fun, from the Bengals. Like, good. the Bengals, yeah. the Bengals defensive players, this is what they were saying about Richardson. They were like, he's not reading anything. He's just literally throwing to spots. He's not yeah. throwing to guys. Like, he just wasn't. It was a bad day at the office for Anthony Richardson and the entire Colts offense in the joint practice with – uh, with the Bengals. But the other thing that I'll say about Michael Pittman is, is that, again, we're doing this is off, you, uh, off of Yahoo. You know, as you know, NBC Sports has a partnership with Yahoo. You got a shot at winning $1 million. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. But ultimately, Yahoo's default settings is half PPR. And, and the, the argument for Pittman is like, just again, huge volume, as you Full mentioned, PPR. lack of lack of touchdowns here. But on Yahoo, where you're doing half PPR, he loses that value because he's, you know, that's the argument for Pittman. It's like he's he's seven for 87 every week kind of thing, you know, and just that doesn't make as much sense. I will say that Pittman is a great player. Going to get a plug in here, but it's true. He is a great player if you want to draft him for like a guillotine league. Again, where you, in a guillotine league where you're literally just you're hoping for floor. You're not trying for upside in a guillotine league. You just want floor consistent production week in, week out, because in a guillotine league, the lowest team, the lowest fantasy football team in the league gets cut. Uh, and you do that every single week and you know, whatever, guillotineleagues.com, I'll, I'll, I'll throw a plug. But the point is, is that uh, Pittman is great in that format because he's so consistent, but like there's no upside to your point and he loses value in half PPR. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and Rotorworld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.